I'm Mardu Sharma and this is Design Mind. Every episode we teach your mind about design by analysing a website. In this episode of Design Mind, we are looking at Juliana Bicycles, which specialises in mountain bikes for women. The website is a good example of clean design. As we will see, it also offers a unique navigation experience. The home page begins with this full page slideshow. Each slide is used to convey a single message about the site. For example, this slide introduces the brand and its unique selling point of making bikes for women. This slide shows Juliana and how she started her business. This slide conveys the ethos and value of the brand, while this slide promotes the store section. The slides are a great way of presenting key information in an easy to understand at a glance format. However, there does seem to be too many slides. Some of the slides, such as this store section one, seems a bit unnecessary as there's a link to the store section that's permanently placed in the navigation. We've talked in previous Design Mind episodes about how products are often selling a particular lifestyle. This is something the slides do brilliantly, as within a few seconds of seeing them, there is a strong association with an outdoor, rugged, free-spirited lifestyle. This slide in particular strongly suggests that the bikes will bring you closer to nature and your friends. Scroll down and we get this tiles interface, which primarily shows off the bikes, but also intersperses them with links to other content. The tiles interface forms part of a unique system for exploring the site, which we will now examine in more detail. As we can see from the navigation menu, the site has four main sections. This is reflected in the tiles, which are also arranged into four groups, with larger index tiles, such as this one, being used to mark out the start of each section. Clicking on one of the tiles triggers JavaScript technology, which allows the new page to seamlessly load. The user can then press this close button, and the same JavaScript wizardry is used to seamlessly return back to the tiles index. This tiles navigation interface is a great way of adding a sense of individuality to the site due to its uniqueness. It doesn't necessarily make the site any easier or harder to navigate, but will stand out in the user's mind by being so different from the norm. This loading icon that appears is a clever touch, as the animal and plant symbols it contains strengthens the outdoor associations of the brand. Let's now analyse one of these product pages. The product pages follow the structure of the home page, with a slideshow on the top and content placed underneath. The slideshow features extreme close-ups of the bikes, which is a good way of giving the user a sense of the product as they can see every detail of the item. Much like the home page, there is a risk of there being too many slides, but I guess that as the user will be interested in the item, they will appreciate from being able to see all the photos. The content layout that's underneath is bold and simple, making it easy for users to absorb information. The site uses these yellow icons, which are used to hide extra information. However, in many cases, such as in this example, the extra information is only one line long, so hiding it is unnecessary. Sometimes the extra information appears interspersed with information that was already on the page. The extra information is in yellow to make it easier for the user to identify it. However, the yellow is quite obtrusive as it stands out too much. The sliding animation that is used to display the information makes it stand out by itself, so there wasn't really any need to make the text in yellow as well. Going back to this navigation system that we looked at earlier, the user can click on these arrows to flip between the pages. This works really well as it lets the user quickly see a range of products. It reproduces the experience of browsing through a catalogue or scanning and browsing in a store. Of course the tiles interface allows the user to see a range of products quickly in one go. However, the flicking experience is actually more fun. One major problem with the product page is that it doesn't have a clear call to action 
A call to action is usually a link such as a purchase button that encourages the user to take action. Here the problem is that the site doesn't allow online selling, instead the user must go to a store. However, the site doesn't really do a good job of helping the user to find a store. There is this where to buy link in the footer, but it's far too small and easy to miss. It also doesn't help that the where to buy page is really long. On the page all the stores are grouped by region. However, it would have been better if the site had used vertical tabs so the user can just click on the region that applies to them and so wouldn't have to scroll through all the other regions. They should have also used geolocation technology to detect the user's location and then display the nearest store that's relevant to the user. Let's look at the article pages. These are the same as the product page. A slideshow is used on the top and content is placed on the bottom. The slideshow is a little bit disappointing, as unlike the home page, which uses beautiful large imagery, the slideshow on the article page tends to consist of smaller photos that don't have the same amount of impact. The text on the article page also suffers from being too dense. Although they have used columns to organise it, it would have worked better if they had broken it into chunks and used pull quotes to highlight key information. Let's now examine the navigation of the site. Like a lot of sites these days, Juliana Bikes uses a mobile style navigation menu. We've discussed in previous Design Mind episodes how this can be problematic, as the user now has to make an extra click to open the menu before they can click to access a section. These mobile style menus on desktop also make it harder for the user to remember which sections they have visited. For example, here's a traditional navigation style bar on apple.com. The navigation makes it really clear as to which section the user is looking at. A mobile style navigation menu can't provide this information as the menu itself is hidden behind the button. Of course, it's debatable if a user needs to know where they're on the site, as surely the content will provide this information for them. However, I still think a traditional style navigation bar is more useful for orientating the user because it conveys this information about where they are on the site. Having said all that, it's debatable if Juliana's bike suffers from these problems thanks to its tiles interface, as with a quick scroll the user can see all the sections without having to click to call a menu. Furthermore, when they visit a product and then close it, the closing animation makes it clear which page the user has just visited. In fact, given how well the tile interface works, this navigation menu ends up being a bit redundant, so I'm not sure why they've included it. A further problem is that the navigation menu button is only on the home page and doesn't appear on the other pages, so it's not something the user can always rely on on being able to access. Let's finish this analysis by examining the site on mobile. On the front page, the tile system collapses down into a single column. It's a very visual interface, however the long scroll can be overwhelming. A further drawback is that all the images weigh down the page, so it takes a while to load. The same applies to the product pages. They require a large amount of vertical scrolling, which can be overwhelming at times. In conclusion, although it has a few problems, Juliana's Bikes is a wonderful site to browse, thanks in particular to the unusual navigation system. The large images and use of loading icons do a good job at associating the brand with a particular lifestyle. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Design Mind. A new episode is released every Monday and Thursday. Visit us on the web at designmind.info. You can also find us at YouTube and on iTunes, and we'd love it if you could leave us a review at any of these places. Until next time, happy designing!